the academy has been invaded by a new way of a new form of study. It used to be the case that um, at, at universities you uh, were teaching a recognised subject with a recognised curriculum and you were carrying out research or, or scholarship in the humanities uh, which was open-minded, um, guided by the pursuit of truth and, and um, not p dismayed particularly if it came to surprising or unorthodox conclusions. Now, um, one of the first things that, uh, that happens when a, a totalitarian government takes over is that the universities are cleaned up. As I say, people who are doing that kind of thing uh, get thrown out. This is what happened when the Nazis took over the Ger German universities and when the Soviets took over, the, the communists took over the, the Russian universities. Uh, uh, and it was the case in Eastern Europe in my day, with the sole exception of Poland, which had universities which were the only universities uh, where every uh, uh, professor was on the right. Uh, that was because the communists were everywhere. But, uh, but uh, on the whole, this is the first move that the totalitarian mentality makes, to stop that kind of free-minded, open scholarship in pursuit of truth. But um, so we, we all have been lucky in inheriting universities of that kind. But is it the case that we still have them? Uh, we, we have seen the growth of an extraordinary number of new subjects in the university uh, in which it, the pursuit of truth seems to be secondary to something else. Uh, the other thing being the pursuit of some kind of political conformity. Uh, if you take a, a subject like women's studies, um, uh, now, I know this is a controversial issue, but perhaps it can be talked about freely in this room. You can't talk about it freely in America, on the whole. Uh, anyway, there, there is a subject. It's very difficult to imagine that you would succeed in that subject if you didn't have, either at the outset or certainly in the conclusion, feminist opinions. And there is a, uh, it's a subject constructed around an ideology, uh, it might be that this ideology is grounded in truth, who knows? But to question it uh, is something which uh, is essentially uh, made impossible both by the curriculum and by the way of teaching it. And I think you'll find that there are quite a lot of subjects like that growing in our universities in which uh, conformity to an orthodoxy takes precedence over intellectual method. Uh, and it may be that, um, that there has to be something like that as the, uh, you know, maybe after all in the Middle, in the middle Ages, maybe theology was like that. Uh, it, but the interesting thing about medieval theology is that it encouraged the intellectual method uh, despite its requirement of orthodoxy. We are now going through a time when truth itself seems to be increasingly marginalized from, the, uh, from academic scholarship. Uh, uh, and I think there is... One particular influence here, which I would like to conclude by mentioning, which is the influence of those theorists who actually say that truth isn't something which, which we can re rely upon at all, because it is a historically given thing which changes with the, uh, with the power structures and structures of domination of the society in which it is uttered. The, the most important figure here, as you will know, is Michel Foucault, uh, who saw all his work as, as giving us a histoire des vérités, a history of truths, as though truths have a history. You know, something is either true or not true, but nevertheless, he wanted to re rearrange the whole curriculum in such a way that when studying the thoughts of, uh, and writings of people of the past, we're not really interested in the truth of what they say, but in the power that speaks through it, that the only commodity in the intellectual world is power, who has dominion over whom. Uh, and that way, of course, you can turn any subject, uh, however impartial it seems in the outset, into an instrument of uh, ideological conflict by saying that, you know, to date, English studies has been an exercise of male power over the female gender. So I'm going to turn it upside down and make it an exercise of female power over the masculine domination. 
You know, and you can turn all the subjects of the university upside down, rearrange them as part of the agenda of liberation, and that way think that you're still doing a scholarship. And the interesting thing is, of course, that you can then call upon a mass of fake scholarship and fake philosophy to give you authority. And that is something which I have written about in in my more theoretical works, it, uh, the, the, the growth of the, uh, of the fake scholarship industry, which enables people to claim authority uh, for nonsense. Uh, uh, and the purpose of that nonsense being that it, it makes conformity to orthodoxy the only thing that you have. Uh, if the scholarship is nonsense, what is there? Only the conclusions. And those conclusions turn out to be the usual uh, uh, liberal axioms from which you actually begin.